In this video, I'll be using Microsoft Dynamics AX for Retail to create and configure a new store and a new POS terminal. Stores can be managed in the Retail Headquarters area under Setup, Store, Stores. This list shows all of the stores that are defined within this company. A store is an extension of a warehouse, so by assigning a warehouse to a store, a store has all inventory capabilities as a typical warehouse within the system. A store can have on-hand quantities, a store can issue and receive transfers, and receive inventory from purchase orders. In addition to some basic information such as store name and opening and closing hours, the store can also have configuration settings which dictate how the point of sale terminal within the store are going to look and behave. The default layout ID will be the default user interface for all terminals and users within the store. And then that layout ID can be overridden at the terminal level or at the user level. A functionality profile is a set of configuration settings that apply to all the terminals within the store. The use of profiles can make managing large number of stores much easier, where the, the settings can be defined at the profile level and then applied to one or more store. And then making a change to the profile in the future will automatically update all of the stores. So here you can see I have my standard profile that's in use and then maybe a test profile for testing out new systems in the lab. The profile will have the locale that the point of sale will respect for settings such as tax calculation and then also configuration settings for login information for staff, error logging, uh, and uh, how the POS terminal is going to behave um, when line items are added or payment lines are added to the transaction. You can also define info codes to collect information during a transaction at various points, such as when line items are voided, transactions are returned, discounts are applied, or tax is changed on the, on the transaction. Receipt numbering can also be configured per store, and here each individual transaction type can have independent number sequences and different masks to format those receipt numbers. So in this case, a sale and a return will each use an independent number sequence, and that number will be formatted to include the store number, the terminal number, an indicator of the transaction type, and then the next sequential number. On the Statement and Closing tab, these settings will determine how the store's end-of-day procedures work and how financials are posted into AX. The Closing method setting will determine how statements are calculated and which transactions are included in the statements. With a date and time setting for closing method, then statements can be set with a beginning time and an end time, and transactions that occur between those two times will be included in the statement. By using the POS batch setting, it will ensure that only transactions that are within closed batches within that date range will be included in the statement. Another very important setting is the default customer. Transactions that occur at the point of sale and that are uploaded into AX are aggregated and posted into financials as sales orders. Those sales orders must have a customer assigned. For transactions that don't have a customer assigned at the point of sale, a default customer will be used in creating those sales orders. Under the Setup menu option, you can determine which tender types are accepted at each store and how those tender types will behave at the point of sale as well as posting into financials. So here you can see these are all of the payment methods or tender types that are accepted. And each tender type will have different posting accounts and different difference allowances or thresholds. The configuration options will determine 
how the point of sale will behave. Sales tax at the point of sale is calculated based on the customer's sales tax group. However, walk-in customers will utilize the sales tax group assigned to the store. There are also configuration settings as to whether or not the point of sale will utilize destination-based taxes. And in the event that tax needs to be override at the point of sale, override groups can be configured. In an effort to make new store creation and store maintenance easier, a number of functions have been created which allow data to be copied from one store to another. And this can be done where all information is copied or just subsets of data. Once the store has been defined, the store can be grouped into a store group here I can see that Store 10 is a member of the mall store store groups. So now when assortments are created and mall store store group is added, Store 10 will receive items from those assortments. Within a store are one or more point of sale terminals. A point of sale terminal has basic information such as names and placements as to where it would be located within the store, the store number that it's associated to, and then a number of profiles which determine how the point of sale terminal is going to act. The hardware profile allows you to configure multiple sets of hardware that are assigned to terminals and can be managed all in one place. So as changes to the profiles happen, it'll apply to all of those terminals that have that profile assigned. So here's an example where there's multiple hardware profiles, generation 1, generation 2, and a test profile for maybe a new system that's being tested out in the lab. The profiles allow you to configure all of the different point of sale devices from the back office and then push those settings down to the store. So which printers are enabled, um, which line display and the line display settings the card reader, and the scanner information can all be configured from within this hardware profile and then be pushed down to the stores and the terminals with these profiles assigned. On the printer tab is the receipt profile. A receipt profile is a set of forms that will print at various transactions from the point of sale. The collection of forms is assigned to a receipt profile and the receipt profile is assigned to the hardware profile. And this allows great flexibility in which documents and which templates are printed at each store and at each terminal. The visual profile has some basic display settings that are appropriate for each terminal, such as resolution and whether it's touch or keyboard. The transaction service profile contains the connection information for this terminal to communicate through transaction service to AX. On the display tab, I can define the default layout ID for this terminal. Layouts can be defined per store, per terminal, or per staff member. The layout determines the point of sales user interface. And layouts are managed under Setup, Retail POS, Till Layout. And the designer allows for drag and drop editing and inclusion or removal of button grids or various UI elements. A given POS layout can support up to five button grids, and button grids can drill down to additional, additional button grids. The different UI elements 
when in design mode can be resized and replaced using the designer. In this example, I don't want to track customer information, so I can free up this real estate by removing that UI element from my till layout. This information can be then saved and replicated down to all of the terminals, so layout changes can be managed centrally and pushed out to the stores. Data replication happens through scheduler through a number of jobs. When first deploying a new store, it's important to send down the global configuration and item price parameters and jobs. Then, based on your desired result, you could either use the end jobs to push the remaining configuration information or use A jobs if the data needs to be location aware 